There are those of you who will never get to the next level in success or in your life because when you get to this point, you, you, you bend. It's simple, my man said it. You can do whatever you want. The big house, nice cars, and a fat bank account just because you wished it. You gotta put in the work now, and that work compounds and accumulates and puts you in a position to have that opportunity when you are of that age. So what did I do? I worked. I worked to such an extreme level that when I push you on work, I don't even ask you to do 50% of what I did. Then your mama didn't like the fact that you were doing it. Your mama didn't understand, and you let your mama in your ear. Like it was your mama's dream. You let your daddy talk you out of it. That was yours. That was something the creator gave to you. That belonged to you. My mother never understood, but she working for me now. I didn't quit because people didn't understand. I worked harder. You've never done something before. You expect yourself to be awesome at it. You haven't done the work. You haven't put in the time. You haven't put in the study hours. And what I'm doing now, I was doing 20 years ago. And I have not been. I didn't break. So what? You don't understand how I do what I do. This is what I've been called to. And under no circumstances will I surrender. Under no circumstance will I quit. Somebody who succeeds. You want to be somebody who builds something. You want to be somebody who people write books about one day. Hear what I'm saying? Don't feed into it. Don't believe the hype. Somebody told you that hard work don't pay off. And you let a little pain stop you from your dream. Girl, you was there. You was running your business. You were there. Listen to me. If you work for it, if you're willing to put in that sweat, that blood, and those tears, baby, I'm telling you, you can have what you want, be what you want, do what you want. Are you hearing me? During that point, what did I do? Is I did what I preached to all of you, which is I put in the work. I gave up all my weekends and holidays in high school because I knew I had to pay that price. I was gonna start with no relationships and in the gutter and I was gonna have to prove it and I would have to show up and meet everybody like I did in my 30s. But in my teens and 20s, I was gonna have to work. And so what I did was to the extreme of anybody I've met, that had options, I punted every leisure activity in my life. Nothing, no weekends, no vacations, zero, nothing, nothing. Every minute has to count. Every minute has to count. It's my truth, I didn't take a single vacation day. Never, zero, zero. All my high school friends, gone because I wasn't around. All my college friends, post-college, gone. Girlfriends, nothing. All in. Kobe Bryant doesn't sit there and talk about how many MVPs he's won or how many championships he's won. No, he gets up at three o'clock in the morning practicing every day. He's not great because he's great. He's great because he puts the work in on a daily basis and he wins every day. And if you want it, you gotta go get it. You gotta play hard for it. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? It's not for the weak and the uncommitted. The reason why you saying no to stuff, the reason why you pushing the snooze button, the reason why you still going to work tripping, the reason why you ain't blow up is because you still on 70%, you still on 60%. You wanna know why the world's passing you up? Because whatever you do for a living, you barely doing it. You coming and you don't wanna be there. You not bringing the fire. You gotta do it quick. You gotta do it fast, you gotta do it in a hurry. Why? Because there's somebody else who's on the same track you are. Somebody else who, listen to me, they're on the same path that you are. Listen to me, it's somebody else just like you trying to do it and sometimes they're working just as hard as you're working. Quit using the word luck, quit believing in luck and start believing in work. Start believing in fortunate. Start believing in results that come from your actions. And when you do that and you wholeheartedly believe it, guess what? That's what starts to happen. As Derek Jeter said, there may be people who have more talent than you, but there's no excuse for anyone to work harder than you do. 
At the end of the day, whether you believe in talent or not is completely irrelevant. Everyone should believe in hard work. Everything in your life is literally a result of that. You're born an infant, a lump of flesh that can't even hold its own head up. And yet somehow, by practicing, by learning, by growing, you're able to get better. You're literally incapable of anything when you're born. Every skill that you have in your life, all the things that you take for granted, at one point you couldn't do them. So understanding that humans truly are an adaptation machine and that they are capable of acquiring any skill that they want, but it requires hard work. It requires that you do the reps. It requires that you put in the effort. And at the end of the day, the people that you're going to surpass are not gonna be the people that have less talent than you. Maybe they even have more talent than you. It's gonna be the people that you're willing to outwork. But until you're willing to outwork them, you're always going to be stuck. And as John Irving said, to do anything really well, you have to overextend yourself. And that's the key. If you want to put in an extraordinary performance, if you want to absolutely dazzle people, then you have to do something amazing. You have to be willing to put yourself out there. You have to be willing to do things that other people think are gonna break you, that other people simply believe there's no way that you could be able to pull that off, that the human animal just is not capable of the lengths to which you are professing to go. And when you profess it, you have to be willing to back it up and you have to put yourself on that march knowing in no uncertain terms, under no circumstances, and for no reason whatsoever would you ever be willing to back down. And when you go in with that level of certainty, then and only then are you actually going to be able to pull this off. And as Billie Jean King said, champions keep playing until they get it right. Fatigue will literally chip away at your will to win. It is the thing inside of your mind, that weak voice that tells you that you're not going to be able to make it. The weak voice that begs you to stop and the weak voice that promises safety and security if you would just quit. And here's the worst part about that. It's right. If you quit right now, if you stop, just sit down, relax. You're not at risk anymore. You're not at risk of embarrassment. You're not at risk of failure. But you're also not at risk of greatness. And if you really want to achieve something, you've got to find ways to put yourself at risk of something great happening. You've got to put yourself at risk of overextending yourself. You've got to be willing to face that you may die, that you may actually fall. And here's the thing, for the people that dismiss that, that say they would never put themselves in that situation, then you have limits. And make no mistake, those limits are self-placed. And for the people that are willing to push that, for people that are willing to go beyond that, for people who understand there are things in this world that they're prepared to die for, and it is the thing that they put at the center of their life, it is the thing that they are living for, but they're not gonna stop, and they understand that where the human mind thinks it will break is far short of where it will actually break. But before you can find that point, you've got to be willing to push yourself. You've got to be willing to go harder and farther than anybody thinks is reasonable or sensible. That's the path. And so the question is, can you be thought a fool? The question is, do you believe in something so much that you would put yourself at risk like that? The question is, can you face down everyone, including the weak voice inside of your own mind, to make the world come true that you want to see come true? Because at the end of the day, nobody's going to do it for you. So if you're a champion, keep going until it's done. What's the problem? You've been waiting your entire life for this moment. This golden opportunity. This rare occasion, this chance to do what so many other people don't get to do, what they don't get to accomplish, what they don't get to experience, what they can only imagine. But you're here. You've made it to this point. You've arrived at this pinnacle place in your life. 
it would be a shame to mess it up. A shame to miss this chance. All because you allowed fear to trump faith. Time waits for no man. Once it's gone, it's gone. It doesn't roll over. Time goes forward. Time never goes backward. The time is now. There has never been a more promising time to achieve greatness. I heard someone once say that greatness is within you, but it's dormant, it's bottled up, just waiting for the moment to unleash and show the world how great you really are. How talented you can be. How amazing your skills are. Not sure if you know or not, but there are hundreds. No, scratch that. Thousands. Now, let me try again. Millions of people that would kill to be in your shoes right now. They would give up food, sleep, TV, cell phone, and any other luxury of the world just to be given the opportunity you have right now. But instead of taking advantage of it, instead of capitalizing on it, you're too busy eating, you're too busy sleeping, you're too busy being distracted by what's on television. You're too occupied with what's trending on social media. Every second you're not working, your competitor is. In other words, you don't have time to chill. You don't have time to just hang out. You don't have precious moments to lose. That same billionaire that you idolize has the same 24 hours that you have. Imagine that. The same 86,400 seconds in a day. Do they waste it? You better work your butt off every single second that you have. Or you will find yourself saying, I should have, but it'll be too late. The time would have already passed. Your chance will be lost. Your golden opportunity will fall in someone else's lap. Don't do that to yourself. You've worked too hard up until this point. You put too much blood, too much sweat, too much tears, too many late nights of studying into your craft to ease up now. The time is now. Not only is it important to you, but it's important to your family. It's important to your friends. It's important to every young child that looks at you as a role model. <laughs> and you had no idea you were being watched. There are young kids in your neighborhood that aspire to be like you. They want the opportunities you've been given, but they may be too shy to tell you. And so they watch from a distance, don't let them down. The time is now. Everyone in your corner is rooting for your success. Everyone in your corner wants to see you shine. Everyone in your corner wants to see you win. Everyone in your corner believes in you. The question is, do you believe in you? Are you committed? to the process? Are you built for this life? Are you ready for the tears? The long days of working hard, the sleepless nights of putting in work, the sacrifice of your time to reach a new level. The time is now. The choice is yours. Don't wait. Don't hold back. Don't be shy. Give it all you got. Give it every ounce of effort you can muster up. Then, and only then, can you be successful. 
The time is now. Ninety percent of you guys that are watching this right now will think about something you want to do, and ninety percent of you will never ever do something about it. You just won't believe in yourself enough. Because we're all conditioned with these two stories, right? One story comes from people who couldn't and didn't think they could. And that story is that you can't and that you shouldn't try. And if you do try, then you're going to lose and you're going to let your family down and you're going to be a failure. The truth is, and this is the truth, coming from a kid that didn't know sh didn't know how to be an entrepreneur, didn't know how to build a website, didn't know how to persuade people, and just tried it and persisted in failing until he did. The truth is, you can. Those that believe try, and those that try learn, and those that learn can. You already have all the tools you need to live your dream. The simple answer is, I just started. I didn't know what the f I was doing. I persisted when it got really, really hard. And along the way, I learned to get and figure it out. I implore you just to try. And before you write, how do I do it? You must have tried. Because often trying alone is the single most important step to being able to. Real quickly, real quickly. The first component, the first thing of your A game, the first letter that you've got to get is the attitude. All right, say it with me. You've got to have the right attitude. Listen to me. Your attitude is everything. Your attitude determines every single thing you do in life. Your attitude determines your altitude. You want to go high in life, you've got to have the right attitude. This is what they say in life. They say that they say that life is, is just 10%. Listen to me now. 10% of what happens is your life. 90%, the remaining big picture, the remaining 90% is how you respond to that small 10%. So no matter what it is that you go through in life, it's only a small fraction. The big picture, however, is how did you respond to that failure? How did you respond to, to, to that adversity? How did you respond to failing that quiz? How did you respond to not getting that promotion, right? Whatever it is you went through in life, how did you respond? How did you bounce back? So it's all about having the correct attitude. Anticipation. All that really means is, listen, you're past the point of hoping for success. You're past the point of wishing for success. Anticipation literally means you are expecting to be successful, all right? When you woke up this morning, you expected certain things to happen, right? Am I wrong? Let me know if I'm wrong. When you woke up, you anticipated eating some breakfast. You anticipated going to school, going to work, right? You anticipated halfway through the day, getting some type of lunch, some, some snack. You, you anticipate certain things throughout your day in other words you expected them to happen listen in other words if you didn't get to lunch on time you felt some type of way right if you didn't get to eat at a certain time you started to get a little angry y'all catching this so when it comes to your dreams you've got to be the same way expect it to happen so much that if it doesn't happen you are starting to feel some type of way if you don't succeed when you're ready to succeed you said listen your day is going south all right so you've got to anticipate being successful. And don't miss this. You have to have the right attitude. You have to anticipate being successful. But last but not least, you got to have some action. Listen, I don't care how great your attitude is. I don't care how much you say, Torian, I'm anticipating becoming successful. If you sit on the couch every day, it ain't going to get there for you. You can't make millions sitting in the bed watching TV all day. You got to get out the bed. You got to get off that couch. You got to put that cell phone down. You got to go out there and get what belongs to you. Listen to me now. Your action is that glue. Everything you've worked so hard for, your action is what's going to mold it all together. I don't know what area you are in your life. I don't know if you're in school watching this video. I don't know if you're in the office watching this video. I don't know if you're at home. I don't know where you are or what area of life you're focusing on, but whatever fear you have, you have to learn how to face that fear. The best way to overcome it, to look it straight in the face and say, it's my turn to take you down. Listen to me, as we close it out, as we close it out, don't miss these three points. We're talking about creating challenges. 
We're talking about challenging yourself. Stop looking for the easy way out. Stop looking for the, 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 e, the cheat code, the staples easy button, right? Stop looking for the easy way. Challenge yourself. And the three things you gotta do is one, set high specific but achievable goals. The second thing is you've gotta learn how to get an early start to your day. And then the last thing, listen, the best way to overcome those fears is to face your fears. So you're sat there and you're looking at your homework, the paper that you're supposed to do, and you can see in that moment that you're hesitating. One key insight, idea, wisdom that you need to take into your skull and into your spirit. And that's in life, when it comes to studying, in that moment when you're hesitating to get the work done that you need to do, there is no in-between. You're either growing or you are decaying. There's no in-between. There is a law of entropy in the universe. Go and look at your physics textbook and you'll realize that there is no in-between. You're either on the attack, you're on the offense, and you're getting things done. So you need to stop waiting where it's safe on the sidelines, and you need to start working. And that means picking up the pen, answering the first question, and then focusing on the next, and the next, and the next, and turning the page over and over, hour after hour, day after day, week after week. You have to stay working. You have to stop waiting where it's safe on the sidelines. Think about where it is you want to be and where it is you don't want to be. Because if you're looking for the motivation, if you're looking for the inspiration to get started, to get going, that's the thing that's really going to drive you. That's the thing that's going to get your rocket off the ground. Now, think about that analogy. When you're waiting and waiting and waiting for the rocket to get started, to launch and lift off into space, what happens? Five, four, three, two, one, lift off. And I want you to use that same analogy in your head. When you sit down at the desk, when you get to school, when you get on the bus, you get on the train, you start walking, you get to the library. Five, four, three, two, one, go. When you get to the next lesson, five, four, three, two, one, go. And I want you to use this countdown to lift off, to get started, because here's the thing. When you're looking for the inspiration, you're looking for the feeling and feelings are temporary. Feelings come and go. You can't control how you feel. You know that already. But what you can control is your level of discipline, the level of discipline that you have to get started. And that's what you can do to help you get there. It's not fun to wake up early and read and read and read. And it might be boring to sit alone in your room or alone in the library studying. It might not be fun. It might not be easy, but it is profitable. It does give you results. Think about all of the great people that we admire in our society and the things that they must have had to go through in order to make it look effortless. Motivation is not just going to find you by chance, it's going to find you warming up in the gym. It's going to find you with that pen in your hand 10 minutes into that study session in the library on a Sunday when there's no one else around. None of your friends joined you. Motivation might even find you like me when you get rejected by every single university you apply for. Sweating, working hard, straining yourself, pushing yourself to get things done. And there's only one person in this world who can make it happen. And that person, my friend, that person is you. That person is the one that looks right back at you in the mirror and you need to stop looking for guarantees from your teachers or from the curriculum. And don't get me wrong, you know, there's plenty of holes in education. There's plenty of things that I don't agree with, but you have to learn to play the game. And this is the what these are the words that I wish I had heard when I was younger. Push yourself, get it done, make it happen. Stop looking for external motivation and start building that fire inside of you. 
Start adding more logs, more petrol to those flames every single day. And when you're waiting where it's safe, not only are you wasting time, but you are murdering. Yes, I use that word intentionally. You're murdering that success that you crave. Because potential doesn't activate itself on the sidelines. It activates itself when you're taking action, when you're in the arena. When you see the people who had less potential than you achieve more because they did what? They got it done. They made it happen. So the only thing that I want you to take away from this video is what? You're either growing, you're either on the attack or you're on the defense. And that means you're decaying. There is no room for an in-between. So push yourself, stop waiting and commit today. The only thing that you need to do is to take action and motivation is what's created as a byproduct. And we have so many things, the entire culture that revolves around creating the feeling instead of doing the action. And that's the single thing that you need to know is if you're looking for the motivation to study, if you're looking for the motivation to work hard, if you're looking for the motivation to get started, you're looking in the wrong place. The only place that you need to look is that the book? Is that the pen? The only thing that you need to do is to get started. Sit down at your desk, turn your phone off, close all of the extra tabs in your window that you don't need and get going. And when the distractions come, realize that these things are temporary. They are temporary visitors. But the regret, the regret that you're gonna feel when you get smacked in the face on results day, in the classroom and the teacher asks you a question and you haven't done the work, you haven't done the homework, you haven't done the assignment, but most of all, you know in yourself, I didn't really live up to my potential, that's gonna hurt. And I say this because I know, I was that kid when I was at school, when I was at university, when I was in college, but the greatest pain, the greatest motivator was regret and trust me, do you want to live with regret or do you want to live with success? If you stay where you are right now, imagine where you'll be in six months. Imagine where you'll be in a year and a rolling stone gathers no moss. And that speaks to the power of momentum. That when you take one repetition, one revision session after another revision session, one habit of waking up early in the morning, and then you do it on Tuesday, you do it on Wednesday, you do it on Thursday, you do it on Friday. And yeah, it wasn't fun, but it was profitable, wasn't it? And all of a sudden you've got a five day streak. And then the game is let's turn it into a 10 day streak. And then the game is let's make it 20, let's make it 30. And next thing you know, you've done a hundred days of studying. And in three months, you turn your entire academic career around. You change from an average student into a great student. And it can be done in a space of a hundred days and it's not going to be fun. The feelings aren't always going to be there. You're not always going to feel like it, but it will be profitable and you will avoid the greatest pain of all. And that's the pain of regret. And that pain, that's permanent. The feeling is not. So which one do you want? Do you want the feeling that's temporary or do you want the regret that is permanent, that's burned into your soul that you knew I could have done better. I could have done so much better. Get up. Stop what you're doing and start taking more action. Take five seconds. Five seconds, this video is gonna end. Five, four, three, two, one. Go make it happen. <laughs>